Welcome to our Passover show. Welcome to Mary Ella's special Passover uh, show. And Mary did a little research. Uh, and you too, Ella. Oh, yes. I contacted my daughter's friend, and he knows quite a bit about Passover, so he gave me a lot of information. What did he say? Well, I didn't talk to him on the phone. We were texting each other back and forth, oh, but, okay. uh, but I did... Um, uh, I did look up some things about the Passover that celebrated seven days, and a lot of people don't know that. I mean, those who celebrate it, obviously, they do know it, but other people who do not celebrate Passover, mm -hmm. they, they have no idea. I actually asked my, my daughter's friends, and they did know. So um, Passover is celebrated for seven days. The first and last day of this period are particularly important. People recite special blessings or prayers, they visit their synagogue, they listen to readings, and they eat a ceremonial meal which is centered uh, around the Seder plate and red wine, what we are drinking today, and children uh, drink red grape juice. Very good. Well, what I, my information is basically like you were saying, it's a story of Exodus. Mm -hmm. And this remembers the escape of the Jewish people from slavery from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And there were plagues because Pharaoh didn't want to free the people. And it was the tenth plague mm -hmm. in which the firstborn, I should say the first male born in the land of Egypt, that they would die. But because God loved his people so much, he warned his people and told them to pass their doorpost with the blood of the sacrificial mm -hmm. lamb the Passover sacrificial lamb. The blood serves as a sign to the angel to pass over those Jewish households given the name Passover. Mm -hmm. And the Jewish people celebrate with a Seder. This is a wonderful holiday to celebrate the blessing of freedom, God, and his love. Oh, yes. Well, since we are drinking our red wine, yes. so we may as well uh, toast to Passover and... Yes. Uh, and uh, we hope that those of you who do not do not celebrate Passover uh, now uh, have learned how it's uh, how it's uh, celebrated. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ellen, would you maybe like to do a prayer? Oh, by all means. Um, okay, Mary. So well, we will start. start. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, the power of God and His deliverance of Israel. This is, a, this is from Psalm 114, and it's also called the Hillel. I think that's how you say it. Say it. Mm -hmm. And when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The seas saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams. The little hills like lambs. Okay, and I will finish this prayer. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? That you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? O mountains, that you skipped like rams? O little hills like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. So a lot of miracles happen. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome to the cooking portion. Today we're going to make a wonderful brisket for our Passover meal. So let's get started. Okay, I have this. Because I bought such a big piece of meat, <laughs> normally you're supposed to cook this in a crock pot, but because of the size of the meat, I'm going to make it in my cast iron um, pot. So first of all, in order for the meat not to stick to the bottom, I like to put a little bit of, uh, you know, like a beef broth on the bottom, okay? Now the next step they want you to do is season the meat. So let's put some salt and pepper. Love that salt. There you go. There you go. Great. Now they say for this specific recipe, they want you to add crushed tomatoes and garlic. So 
They said for in order for the crushed tomatoes, they want you to use a 14 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And since this is more than 14 ounces, I'm only going to use half a can here. There we go. Beautiful. That's beautiful. The next thing we're going to do is that we're going to crush two to three cloves of garlic. I got my garlic crusher. Okay. And then after that, you just like, just sort of scrape it. Don't have a knife on me at the moment, <laughs> but that's okay. So after you do that, you just sprinkle that on top. And maybe I'll do another one. Here we go. Ready? Okay. All right. And then we're going to get all that good garlic here. Okay. And you sprinkle it. And then we can just maybe spread it around with the sauce. And then, mm -hmm. at that point, all you're going to have to do is put the cover on. And put the cover on, and then you let it cook. I would say since it's a big, since, since it's a big piece of meat, um, you, they want you to cook it at you know a regular, you know regular temperature oven, which is you know be, well, between 350 400 depending on how much of a hurry you're in. But I couldn't even cook it for a couple hours possibly, and um, so that is going to be put in the oven. Now, while the brisket is in the oven, 25 minutes before it's done, you make some nice roasted vegetables. And so we're going to start off. Well, last time when I was using this wonderful garlic press, I forgot my knife. <laughs> so this time I have it. So I started crushing some garlic. I'm on my last one. Again, two to three cloves. Okay. And make sure it's really tight. Just scrape the bottom here. And there we go. We got our garlic. So now we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to put our onion. And you're going to maybe mix up some of this wonderful garlic. And at this point, I probably would probably put my olive oil. Okay. And we're going to mix it up. I just washed my hands, so we're, I'm good. I can mix it with my hands. Okay. Wonderful. And I'm also going to roast some carrots, too, on the same sheet. I'm going to put my carrots, and I'll put some salt and pepper. Pepper and salt. And again, I'll put some olive oil. There we go. Mix that up, too. And so after everything's all mixed up here, at that point, you're going to roast these at 425 for 20 minutes. And when the brisket comes out, we're going to put the, this wonderful onion mixture on top, and we're going to sprinkle some chopped parsley, and that will be a wonderful brisket that I'm very looking forward to eating. That's it. about the center plate. Here it is right here. Mm. As for the food on the Seder plate, there are five or six different Passover foods, each symbolizing a unique element of the Exodus story. First, three pieces of matzah are wrapped in a napkin on a plate. The matzah is partaken from ritually three separate times during the Seder. The first time, the matzah is eaten by itself, Next, it's eaten together with marrow, with marrow in parentheses, bitter herbs. And finally, with marrow and or caroset in, in a sandwich. Also, during the Seder, one of these pieces are broken in half. This is known as the Mary Coven. Yes, which is hidden for the children to find for either candy or a small toy after dinner. Yes, and matzah is an important part of the Seder. It is unleavened bread. When the Israelites learned that the Pharaoh had agreed to let them leave Egypt, 
they did not have the time to bake the bread for their journey. Lest Pharaoh change his mind, which he did, of course. So they quickly made the unleavened dough and baked it on their backs in the sun. Mm. Matzah is also called the bread of affliction, which symbolizes the hardship of slavery and the Jewish people's hasty transition to freedom. Next is the shank bone. The shank bone represents the paschal sacrifice offered by the Israelites on the eve of their exodus from Egypt. And next is the egg. It stands in for a holiday sacrifice once offered at the Holy Temple. The egg is also a universal symbol of springtime, new beginnings, and rebirth. All things that are echoed in the story of the Exodus. Marrow. In parentheses, horseradish slash romaine lettuce. Marrow, or bitter herbs, is another one of the Passover foods on the Seder plate, and it symbolizes the bitterness of slavery. Different families use different foods to represent the marrow, but it's most typically horseradish or romaine lettuce. The next is the carousel, right there. And it's a taste-like mixture of fruits, nuts, and sweet wine or honey. Kereset is a symbol of the mortar used by the Israelite slaves when they laid bricks for Pharaoh's monuments. The word kereset is derived from the Hebrew word for clay. Hmm, this is interesting. Yes, the next is carpus. It's a green leafy vegetable like romaine lettuce and parsley, which symbolizes the initial flourishing of the Israelites in Egypt. A bowl of salt water is on the table, and parsley is dipped into it. Mm. Like that. Oh, that's how it's done. Yes. Mm. And um, carpus mm. represents the tears of the Jewish people enslaved in Egypt. Mm. Also, for the Seder, they have a booklet called the Haggadah. And it's a book that tells the story of Passover. And it's placed at each place setting at the table and read during the Seder. And normally an elder or one of the hosts leads the Seder. Also, too, during the Seder, Ella, do you mm -hmm. want to read about the wine? Oh, the wine, yes. Oh, okay. So during um, Seder, four glasses of wine, wine, I drank throughout the Seder. Children can drink grape juice. This represents the four redemption promises found in Exodus in which God tells the Jewish people. He will take them, he will take them out of Egypt, deliver them from bondage, redeem them with an outstretched arm, and acquire them to be God's chosen people. Now we talked about the Seder play, but Ella, what is Seder? A uh, Seder. The Passover Seder is a religious service held on the first night of Passover. The Seder service is also conducted on the second night of the holiday holiday for those living outside of Israel. During Seder, four glasses of wine are drank throughout the Seder. Children can drink, drink grape juice. This represents the four redemption promises found in Exodus in which God tells the Jewish people he will, he will take them out of Egypt, deliver them from bondage, redeem them with an outstretched arm, and acquire them to be God's chosen people. Oh, very good. Well, I also found out that traditionally the Seder begins with the lighting of the candles mm. and a blessing, of course. The wine is blessed also with prayer known as Kiddush. And the wine is blessed throughout the evening. Blessings are also said for everything we mentioned about on the Seder plate, for the carpus, the marrow, and matzah. And all the blessings in the food, all, they're all eaten in a specific order. The main meal is served. And um, after the meal is eaten, the children go to find the afikoman. And the Seder continues. Toward the end of the evening, a cup of wine is poured for the prophet Elijah, and the door is open for him. So here's the empty glass here, and mm -hmm. at the end of the meal, we're going to pour some nice wine for him. 
and afterwards psalms or hallel are sung there's a blessing for the fourth glass of wine and a piece of the afikoman is eaten and the seder is completed by saying next year in jerusalem mm, next year in jerusalem yes mm. I didn't know that. Well, we learn something new every day. Yes, we mm -hmm. sure do. And as, let's talk for our meal now, Ella. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I made a nice salad. I um, I put called cherries in it. And this is a Passover. Mary I looked up the recipe online. And it's a Passover uh, salad that has cherries in it, romaine lettuce, and it has uh, cucumbers sliced. And... Um, also, I have the recipe in the kitchen, and then um, I used aged red wine vinegar, and uh, and I drizzled some olive oil on top of it. Looks like a wonderful salad. Mm. Also, too, this is the brisket I made from earlier. Some carrots, some latke, and also, too, we have some matzo ball soup. Mm. A wonderful That's meal. Good. Oh, yes. It looks it looks great. Happy oh. Passover. God bless you all. Yes, we God all love by our Father in heaven. Oh, yes. God bless you God all. God bless. Yes. Take care, everyone. Let, let's toast, Barry. We're drinking red, red wine, of course, today. Welcome to the last words of this episode. Mary will read a, a quote, nice quote. Yes, and this is from Morris Joseph. Passover affirms the great truth that liberty is the unalienable right of every human being. Oh, that's a nice quote. It's so true. Yes. So let's yes. toast again to each yes. other and, and everybody else, viewers and everybody else. Yes, yes. and so have a blessed Passover. Yes. God bless you all. God bless you.